Howdy folks and welcome to 15 Nautica Mile Arc. Today we are going to do a real life flight with a real life livery. And by that I mean we're going to follow a real life flight that um, happens here locally. This is Marvin Windows and they fly every day from Minneapolis St. Paul International to War Road, Minnesota. And the reason for that is War Road is where Marvin Windows has their corporate headquarters. So they fly every day sometimes more than once a day and it's just for corporate guests and things however if you would like to fly there yourself you can make a reservation pay about 150 dollars or so and if there's room for the flight they'll call you and you can drive on down to signature flight services at msp and hour and five minutes later you're in war road instead of driving six and a half hours of course you need to have a friend or somebody who has a car once you get there because there really isn't anything to I don't even they might have car rental maybe but anyway that's the that's what it's for and every dollar they get for tickets all goes to charity they don't keep any of it in fact this is the first airplane my kids have been on in real life and unfortunately I wasn't with them they were with the grandparents but their first airplane ride was from Minneapolis to War Road in a 1900C though Marvin Windows actually flies the 1900C. This is the Carnado 1900D. Close enough. That's just what we're going to do. I did create this livery though myself. It's my first and only livery I've created for any aircraft. So it's not 100% super duper cool, but it is entirely accurate and I did the best I could. And um, it is available if you go to the org forum and search Carnado 1900D liveries, you'll see it. Um, my username there is Sonata in F sharp. It's not 15 nautical mile arc. I created that name years ago. Anyway, Enough talking about that, um, we are running two freeware sceneries today. We are running Ted Davis's Minnesota scenery, and I've removed everything except the airport. The airport is great, the buildings that were modeled around it were hideous, so I got rid of them. And in place of those buildings, I'm running, what is it, it's a KMSP VFR by Gizmo Cells. I found this on the org forum. And this user does not have an airport in their scenery, but they have a lot of buildings modeled. It is a frame rate killer, but I don't care. It looks fantastic. If you look towards the top center of your screen, there's a the Minneapolis skyline. That's about as real as it looks from the airport. I have had the chance to see it myself many, many times, and that is spot on. If you look over here, we can actually see St. Paul as well in the distance. I do have downtown Holman Field freeware too it's a different user and um, that's a different story but i do have that modeled unfortunately autogen fills in the fort snelling cemetery this is supposed to be a cemetery um, i do plan on doing kmsp myself for the scenery gateway so everybody will have it and it's going to be way more detailed than this this has a lot of mistakes like the taxiway here is gone i fixed it but it disappeared again um signature and the other buildings here are completely different types of buildings that actually you can get close to from um, this um, web, web. And Humphrey Terminal looks way different than that. So I may at some point make my own KMSP for the gateway so everybody can enjoy it. I just don't have the time right now because I do want to spend a couple months working on it and things like that. We will do a Minneapolis VFR flight another time where I'll go by and you can see Ikea Mall of America is modeled, South Dallas is modeled, Eam Prairie Mall is modeled. That might not mean much to you if you're not from the area, but it's pretty significant. Um, South Dallas Mall is the first in interior mall in the whole U.S., things like that. But let's stay on track. So we are going to fly this flight. Um, real life, it takes an hour and five minutes. I think it's going to take me longer just because I'm not a professional pilot and I have no idea how to manage things like that. Uh, we are going to take off on runway 30 left, just like they usually do in real life from here. And um, we will follow a flight plan that is as close as I can get. There's no really published flight plan for this flight. It's just two pilots who fly every day, and they kind of stick to the same thing. But if you go to Flight Aware, it changes for weather every day. The last thing I wanted to mention is we are flying with overcast skies today, provided by SkyMax Pro version 3.2. 
And I do have it set to evening. Um, this time of year, we're looking at like 8 o'clock, 8.30 right now. Um, it's dark in Minneapolis, or it doesn't get dark until after 10 o'clock. Sun sets at 9 something this time of year. It is the, nearing the end of June right now. So it's going to look great when we get up there. The point of this flight is to fly above the clouds, hang out above the clouds, drop below the clouds or right before our runway, sort of. And um, just enjoy that type of flying. We have never done that on this channel where we go up above the clouds and come down where we're supposed to. Very rewarding experience, even though for me it's going to be autopilot for an hour. For you, it's, only, it's not going to be because I'm going to edit that out, of course, and you're watching the edited version. So that is the longest introduction I've ever had, I think, leading up to a flight. So let's hop in. First of all, we're ready to board. I remembered this time to turn on the boarding lights. I have external power hooked up, not using the battery. And I turned on the reading lights, the overhead lights, the flood lights, and testing the emergency lights. They're all modeled separately. Um, Seatbelt and no smoking are not modeled in this aircraft. Um, I do not believe any newer versions may or may not either. Um, I don't know if there's a newer version of this aircraft right now, actually. I haven't looked. I guess I could. I'd like to open my windows too, by the way. All right, so enough jabbering around. That was quite quite a long introduction. Let's get this thing started. First thing we need to do, though, is fuel. I've decided to be much better about my fuel and things. Now, this flight, I calculated it on the flight calculator for this aircraft. And it says 1,900 gallons of fuel, including reserves. But if we go that far... It's one and a half hours, so the flight time in real life is an hour and five minutes. But me being me, and not ever seem to go as fast as they do, they fly this thing at 257 knots or higher in real life. You can go to Flight Award and see that for yourself. When I fly this thing, it tops out at cruise altitude at like 230 or something, so that's way slower. So I'm actually going to give myself a lot more fuel. We're going to go to almost two hours of fuel. Also, um, cruise altitude today will be 16,000 feet. They usually fly at 16,000. Today I happen to check their flight plan for fun because there's severe weather in the area. They flew at 15,000. And if you look at their track, it was all over the place because they're avoiding weather. It's pretty fun to watch in real time. All right, so um, I'm going to do that with fuel. A little more than we need. I don't care. At least we won't land above maximum landing weight. It does look like it's dark outside because the clouds shadows are turned on pretty heavily with SkyMax Pro, but I like it that way, at least for now. Let me look at my setup checklist. I think I got everything done I wanted to do. Yeah, so now I'm going to look at my startup checklist here for the aircraft. So first thing we need to do, but well, we already have external power on. We already have some of the lights on, so we're going to turn on the rest of the lights. And um, as everybody's seated, the seatbelt light will come on. I'm actually going to turn this off. And I'm going to turn this off. And that leaves just the reading lights. And that looks like this. See that? So when they're high in the sky, you can just read and not be disturbed by anything. Of course, I would have done that a lot later while we're in flight, but I do not have a co-pilot to do that for me. So that also means we're going to come down here and we're going to... Close the doors manually. I could walk around, close the passenger door myself, but uh, it just takes too much time. Cock the door behind us needs to close. There it goes. It's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Are we going to get a sound out of it? Alright, I didn't hear anything. Let me make sure my sound is turned up. And we'll grab the static elements. And we'll close that and now we're ready for the next step here all right um, battery we want to get the battery going I just flipped up there we go turn on the battery and then the avionics switch we'll turn on our gps and such now we got to get our lights going here so landing light tax light not yet uh, we do need the beacons we'll turn on nav anyway i have to look this up don't bother leaving a comment i'll look it up i don't know what it means though i did this whole thing on lights, I studied to make sure I turn them on at the right time, and this never came up. But I will look that up as soon as I'm done with this video, I promise. Alright, so now um, we need to turn this switch on on the autopilot. The autopilot, ever since the X-Plane updated 10.45, is all screwy. Do you see this? 
So any autopilot we do is going to have to be down below except for here. Just a neat little thing to mention. Flight plan. Uh, let's put in our flight plan now. And uh, cause I want to waste fuel. So we'll say everybody's still boarding while I do the flight plan. So I guess I turned the lights off back there too soon. But like I said, I don't have a co-pilot to do that for me. So flight plan. You simply click flight plan and then you move the cursor up. Oops, shoot. Okay, that's a problem with the Cinema Verte stuff, is it moves around on you. So I might have to pop this out. I'd like to do it this way, though. I'll come here. There we go. Took three tries, but I got it. So, we're starting to KMSP. We're going to go to Waxeb first. Um, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. But anybody who knows waypoints in the United States, they all mean something to the locals. The most popular example is if you look at the waypoints and approach plates for Orlando Airport around Disney. They're all Disney characters, for example. Here, I get a lot of them, like when we did the Lake Superior tour and we had Home of Cirrus, where are two waypoints, because that's where Cirrus headquarters are. Here we have Waxeb. I don't know what that means, but the next one, conveniently, is Blue Ox. Babe the Blue Ox with Paul Bunyan, do you get it? Blue Ox, and the reason for that is this waypoint is right over the Bemidji Airport, and Bemidji is where there's a statue of Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox at the Wayside Rest Station. Not a Wayside Rest, it's actual travel center, I guess now. It used to be Wayside Rest when I was a little tiny kid, now it's a travel station. Right on Lake Bemidji. Blue Ox. Blue Uniform Ox. Oscar X-Ray. And, oh, there we go. Blue Ox. Then after that is Dopey, which I have no idea what this means either, other than it's Delta. Uniform... Oh, come on, there's that moving around camera here. There we go. Lima. Papa. And Echo. It's kind of funny because I'm learning my alphabet. And I will spell things out. My day job a lot for serial numbers and things. And my technicians who call me are like, Oh, you must have been in the military. I'll say, Nope. Then they're like, You must be a pilot. And I don't dare tell them I'm a pilot in a flight sim. Because that's... If you're not in a flight sim, it's kind of... They don't get it. People think it's a game and not a hobby. You all watch and know it's a hobby. And it can get expensive. If you want it to. Alright. And Kilo Romeo Romeo Tango is our war road... International Memorial Airport, also known as Swede Field. And there we go. Now, there is something else we have to do. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Notice here we don't have a connection to our first waypoint. Normally in real life, we would have air traffic control giving us vectors and such. But we don't have that. So we're going to put direct to the first waypoint. Now if you look, very carefully there we go our first leg is now established the reason for that is I can hop on autopilot almost immediately and it'll take us there all right flight plan is in the GPS oh yes we need to switch this to um, GPS so our autopilot will read that um, in real life there is an ILS approach for war road there's not in the sim and I've not edited the file to um, make that ILS happen so we'll just go all the way to Duple or Dope or whatever, and we'll go visual manually from there. All right, um, we already closed the doors. I did that early, I guess. Or we closed the doors, they turned off the lights. Yeah, that was early. All right, so now we need to get our props here to feather after we set all these because my yoke. Okay, feather it is. Now we get to start some engines. So, um, someone said there's a bug you have to turn external power off first. I don't know if that's true or not. I just do. So, we are. Ignition auto arm. I'm going to trim this left. We are going to hold ignition till 12%. And then we will give it full fuel.
And there we go. And if we come outside, we should see this turn in a moment here. Um, I only have one access on my yoke for fuel, so that lever I just flicked off camera turned on fuel for the other engine as well, but it doesn't make a difference in the sim. This should get started here any day now. There it goes. Good enough. Hop in, we'll start the other one. Hold this to 12%, let go, and my fuel is already up, like I said. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. See how this is two? You can get, you know, I can get um, extra hardware to have each one individually, but I'm not going to. Oh, I'm going to set my trim while I'm looking at this here. I always forget about trim, but anyway. Uh, we probably want to go like that a little bit. Okay. I don't have an exact number there. Alright. Ignition switch. Generator switches. We have to do generator for each one. So the way the battery will turn off. There we go. Alright. AC bus is here. And air bleed valves are over here by the co pilot. And then rudder boost is between the seats. And if you want to do climate control, so it's not 40 degrees in our cabin, we can turn on some of this. Turn that to auto. I think turn this up to auto temp. It'll get to like 100 degrees though. Turn the furnace on. Uh, all this other stuff. All this stuff is modeled if you want to play with it. Um, if you have really good headphones right now, you can hear when I turn this on. You can hear the vents turn in and stuff. Cabin pressure. If we wanted to do, whoops, I was right. Um, is right here. That's the next one of the next things I need to learn is how to model that stuff. I have like passing out turned off, so we're not going to pass out. Now, if we go back here, we got to turn auto feather to arm, and then generator ties closed. Uh, then we want to do our stall horn and our anti ice should be. We'll do auto there. Turn that up to normal. I don't think we're going to need it though, to be honest. Prop sync on. And we are ready to take off. Oh, here we go. Trim between the green band. So I need to go this way a little more. It says in the middle. That's close enough. Alright, well, we are ready to taxi. No, we're not. I have to set autopilot up. I was going to do autopilot where we're holding for the runway. I'm just going to do it now. So we're going to cruise at 16,000 feet. Alright, and then we're going to come over here. And I'm actually going to use this. will actually work. We're going to use the GPS. We're going to climb. Now this airplane, I guess, in ideal conditions at sea level, can climb at 2,600 feet, I guess. We're not going to go that much. We're going to try 22. If that slows us down too much, we'll come down, but we'll do that. So we got GPS, vertical speed, alt select. I've had issues with this where I'll have all this set and it just keeps climbing past the 16,000. So not, well, whatever I've been doing. And then we want to set our heading bug because, um, see this is all screwed up here. Because when we go visual, between Baudette and the War Road, we want to turn at 315 degrees. So let's. Oh, I can't see that from here. I think it's 315 I have written down. Yeah, 315. So we need to have this set for 315, so we'll just turn towards the bug. And 292, way too far. 92, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, my. Bouncing camera again. Uh, something like that. 304. Okay, hang on. One more try. 315. So now, when we go visual, we have something to look at, etc., etc. Let's have one more look outside. Everything should be up and running. Everybody's clear. And we're going to taxi out that way to 30 left. And we will be on our way. I think I have everything I wanted, so let's um, turn on our taxi lights and get out of here. Well, we got to move props to taxi.
you can tell they change sound that's how you can tell if you're not looking at it and we'll get rid of that that's just for prop sync parking brake a little bit of fuel and we should get rolling here there you go takes a lot of throttle because our props are so low and like I said the taxiway is missing so we're just going to look for the line here but I'm going to shut this maybe you can hear me better now I can barely hear myself okay where's that yellow line that's kind of in the wrong spot it's in the grass I don't really see it, it doesn't really matter like I said I fixed this and it's been working but now it disappeared again so I have no idea anyway oh there it is I see the lights I thought that was the edge of the taxiway that's the center line lights anyway it doesn't matter Ugh. not fun what we are gonna do when we taxi or when we take off is we're gonna you know get from positive speed gear up but then we're gonna flatten out a little bit over the runway to gain speed we're gonna take advantage of the really really long runway so that we can get speed before we start to climb and then hopefully climbing at 200 20 200 feet per minute won't knock us down and I was looking for a clock in here but I can't find one um, I wanted to be better about fuel well there's a clock I can't see from here though I'll have to push it later okay and I want to get better about recording my time in flight like the pros so I've learned to calculate fuel at least in this aircraft but and I've um I want to learn better about time there's also something I want to mention about the fuel in this aircraft but I'm not going to until we are at the hold line because I don't want to run off the taxiway Alright, cruising along. I know we're going kind of fast, but this introduction part of the flight has been way too long as it is. I want to get in the air. This is going to be a long flight for me. Anything over about 40 minutes is long. And the reason for that is in real life, I just don't have a lot of time. Um, so I happen tonight to have almost two hours to myself. So that is why I am taking advantage of it. And I'm going to fly a slightly longer flight. Of course, it's not going to be that long for you guys, but it is for me. Alright, so. Um, everything is set here. I wanted to do a couple more things. Boy, my brakes. I think my brakes got messed. i got to check that here. I'm going to, I'm going to check my brakes on my yoke. I'll be right back. Yes, I was right. My brakes remapped to something else all on their own for some reason. That seems to happen a lot with explain where your buttons will just remap themselves sometimes. I used to do a button check every time because for a while my reverser was always screwed up. Anyway, um, I wanted to turn the correct lights on. And I wanted to look at this fuel a second. So this fuel, I've noticed, never moves. Um, I've flown this before and looked and it never moved so I think I need to mess with this and then once I start pushing these buttons then the sim says oh let's model fuel but if I don't touch anything this never goes down so I'm not going to mess with that today and that's something else on my short term to do list is to figure this out but I just kind of want to point that out because I noticed that before so we'll check this periodically because we're already in the yellow but it's a short flight and I don't think this is going to move so I just wanted to talk about that. All right, lights are on, everything's set, flight plan. Um, everything else is set, right? I'm gonna do flaps down, one. And autopilot set, we're gonna do props all the way forward. Take off the parking brake and we'll get out on the runway. And we will get out of here. Oops, I was gonna set that clock. Shoot, I'll wait till we get on the runway. And my frame rates are kind of down because I'm running 
two freeware sceneries that gobble up my frame rates, but as soon as we get out of the city, I'll shoot back up to 40, 50 frames per second. We're at about 19 to 20 right now, bare minimum. Um, this aircraft is a frame rate killer too, this Carnado B1900D, which I absolutely love. It was my very first payware aircraft, but it's a frame rate killer, although you read the reviews and they say it's not so bad, but I've got seven or eight payware aircraft, and this is the only one that kills my frames. All right, so, well, that's not a clock. It looked like a clock from way over there. Okay, I just, I guess this doesn't have a clock. Um, I would expect to see the clock here, but it's slew mode instead. So I think in real life that would be a clock, I'm not sure. But anyway, if you look across, doesn't that look like a clock from way over here? All right, I was wrong again, but hey, I'm getting better, right? Simulation is what you make of it. I'm trying to get more and more immersive. Anyway, flaps down, lights on, we are ready to go. Hit the parking brake and let's go. We are going to um, um, positive rate, gear up, flaps up, and then we'll fly, or not flaps up, but then we'll fly level with the runway to get some speed. Then we'll engage autopilot. And we should have some nice sightseeing here too with the skyline right before we hit the clouds. All right, we'll pull up a little bit. All right, positive rate, so gear up. We'll do flaps up already and then we'll just kind of level off a little bit I learned this trick um, I was watching a real-life YouTube video and when there are really long runways like this and you're in a smaller plane pilots just like to kind of level off and get as much speed as they can I guess I didn't know that although we're trimmed for takeoff though so we're climbing so whatever I just totally contradicted myself anyway it's working out okay here all right, we'll let it climb now, then I'll gauge autopilot in a minute. I don't want to be too hasty. And autopilot now. It's going to turn us a little bit, and I'm completely hands-free. And see, our speed is great. We're at 210 knots. 200 knots. See how that worked out? So now we got the speed, and we're climbing at our 2200. In fact, I probably could climb a little faster now. Well, now our speed's going to come down. All right, so there we go. Let's hop over to our... Um, passenger seat and have a look out the window that looks great that right there would be Lake Nokomis with Lake Hiawatha right here and the skyline should be coming into view just as I thought it would just under the wing there and we don't have very long then I gotta do engine management we'll start on fire but we should be able to climb a little bit here There we go. There's a skyline coming into view. There's 35W with whopping, what, 17 frames per second, probably? Oh, well. But this is a, you know, good-sized city with a bunch of freeware scenery added on with hard surfaces, so the frames are doing pretty well, I think. Freeware seems to be harder on frame rates than payware for some reason. There's a Mississippi behind the skyline. And pretty soon we should see some lakes. There they are. So we have Lake Calhoun at the bottom. Or, I'm sorry, Lake Harriet. There's a cemetery here. Lake Calhoun, Lake of the Isles. In case you're wondering, I used to live. Well, we missed it, but right on, we went right over my old house. All right, we're looking good. I better do some engine management or we're going to have some problems. So I'm going to look down here and bring in our picture. Everything's in the green, basically. So that's going to take our speed off. Let's see how well that worked to gain speed and then climb. Um, otherwise, we'd be stuck at like 140 knots right now, not getting anywhere. So... Everything is in the green. Green, green, barely. Green, green, that doesn't matter. And this never moves. I don't think that's modeled. But anyway, so we're still doing pretty well. We will eventually catch up to what our climbing speed would have been had I not gained speed first. But this kind of gave us a head start. So we come over to GPS. In three minutes, we're going to hit Waxib. 
then we're going to head north, and then it'll be, I don't know, quite a while. Quite a while before I talk to you. All right. Um, Lake Minnetonka, obviously. And Carlson Towers would be here. I say that because I used to work there. And when you land from Minneapolis, you come out here, turn at the towers, and come down here. Um, we're quite a ways out already. This is a good in traffic, light traffic. It's a good half an hour drive from the airport. What do we got out this side? Skyline's behind us. Let's have a look outside and then we'll get ready to hop into these clouds, which would be fantastic. There you can see the runway that we took off from right behind us. Mississippi River here, Minnesota River here, hotels in Bloomington here that are modeled, custom modeled, by the way. Eden Prairie Mall, I'm sorry, that's Eden Prairie. This is Eden Prairie Mall. Southdale Mall is here, Southdale. That's not Eden Prairie Mall. This is Southdale. I don't know what that is. Anyway, that'll be a separate video. I'll go over all that stuff. There's the skyline, St. Paul there, Fort Snelling, great bicycling around there, 394, this looks realistic too, the way that's modeled with malls and stuff. Alright, we're about to head into the clouds, I better hop back in because I want to watch this view from the wing. So we'll just have a look at Lake Minnetonka as we enter the clouds. The clouds are about 2,000 feet thick, so it should take us a, almost a minute to get through them. moment here we should pop out of these clouds. I'm not editing this section. I want this to be real time going through these clouds. So you'll hear quite a bit of silence here. As the clouds get thinner towards the top, there we go. Sun. Like I said, I do have a kind of set for the evening early early evening this time of year nearing the middle of summer so this is skymax pro at work i did turn the god rays off for this flight because when you have overcast plus the god rays shining through it makes the entire screen bright yellow and it's just awful so if i had them turned on you would see like the sun rays but i'll turn that on for other videos but for overcast it just does not work Right, let's see where we at. 12,000 heading for 16,000. See, I told you eventually we'd catch up to our cruise or climb speed, but that was a really nice head start. Oh, we're about to make our turn in 17 seconds. There we go. Now we are heading north. We'll have more of a look outside once we're at climbing altitude. Because these clouds look better and better the higher you are, obviously. And then we'll have the cirrus layer above us, the overcast below us. Remember how dark and gloomy it was down below, but how bright and sunny it is up here? Just gotta love it. So look at that. One hour, it says. Our next waypoint. 
real life flights, hour, five minutes. I want to see if we can stick to that. All right, we just start to level off now. We're coming up on 16,000 feet. There you go. All right, autopilot worked. We did not climb through our selected altitude, which has happened to me before. That looks pretty nice. The sun will not be setting by the time we get there, but it'll be a little lower than that. All right, I think I can push that right. There we go. So, oh, now look at the catch up. Look at that estimated time there. Now that's to our next waypoint, which is Blue Ox. Blue Ox is Bemidji, and then we go another lake to Dual Bay, but the Blue Ox leg is much, much, much shorter than this one. So 44, yeah, that'll get down a little bit. Oops, I didn't turn on weather. Well, weather's not, we just don't have any weather. So we're cruising. We have quite a ways until the next waypoint. So I, we're going to do some sightseeing now. I'm not going to have any background music this time. I'm just going to turn up the sound of the sim and we'll have some highlights and I will see you when we are 11 minutes out because 11, at 9 minutes out we need to start our descent. 9 minutes out from Dolpe, Dolpe, whatever. So I will see you when we're 11 minutes from Dolpe.
Alright folks, we're back. I hope you enjoyed yourselves listening to The Sound of the Sims. Um, like I said, I decided to not do background music this time. I just thought I would let us listen to The Sim and appreciate the sounds. It's kind of meditative and kind of nice. You can see that the sun is kind of setting. It's moved quite a bit during our trip. It was above those clouds when we started. Really, really nice scenery though. And um, it's about time to come down now. So let's make sure everything's ready to go. We should probably turn on the fasten seatbelt signs. So oh, they left them on the whole time, I guess. Okay, we'll turn them back on again. Um, I think pilots these days leave them on pretty much all the time anyway for these short flights. We don't need landing lights yet, although I think I might turn them on as soon as we descend. Just because I'll forget if I don't. I wanted to show you the fuel like I talked about. It has not moved. Not moved an inch. So either it's not modeled, which would be confusing if it were modeled, I assume it is. Which would mean I probably have to play with these, and touching these will prompt it to work. But since I didn't touch that stuff, nothing's changed. I thought I found a clock here, a stopwatch, but it's just a clock, I think. And then same thing over here, it's just a clock, I believe. Uh, whoa, it's 110 degrees, let's um... Turn this down a little bit in our cabin here. Turn the furnace off. Ah, we'll do that. All right, so we're about ready to come down. We're 11 minutes out. Let's turn on the landing lights anyway so you don't forget. And we are going down to 3,000 feet, which is this direction. There's 3,000. Now we need to descend. Okay, 10 minutes. What we need so we're at 16,000 take away three. We need to go down 13,000 by 10. This is a little more than a thousand feet per minute. Let's start at 1500 and then we will change that as we need to. So let's descend 1400. I'll select. I'm going to kill the throttle so we don't overspeed. Let's just double check autopilot. Nav still, that's not going to change. Descend at 1400 feet per minute and Alt Select, which means it should capture 3000 feet. But I'm always nervous about that for reasons I've stated before. Alright, I just want to watch the sunset. We're still on autopilot, so we've got plenty of time. In fact, let me um, pull up a wing view here. Isn't that pretty? Can't complain about that. We're at 13,000 and descending. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put some throttle back in. We don't need to actually slow down when we descend. We can just descend. I'm kind of bad about that. Slowing down while I'm descending. We don't need to do that. We can keep our speed up until, until we need more fine-tuning of our control here. So we need to go down 10,000 feet, about 10 and a half minutes, but that's obviously going to shoot right through 10 minutes, 1,400 feet, feet per minute. It's going to be pretty close. So when we get to Dolpe, we're supposed to be at 3,000 feet, and that is based on the arrival chart for this airport. However, I believe you will see that is going to be pretty high. If you look at the Pappy on the runway, it's going to be pretty high. So um, that's going to be tough because we got to change our trim quite a bit. Because look at that trim now. We have to change our trim quite a bit, and so we're going to have to um, 
push down and watch our speed so we don't get too fast because we got to get flaps and gear out and then land. So the plan, adjusting speed here, adjusting throttle, oh, we're going through the clouds. Let's have a look here. The plan is to approach at 110 knots and then our final approach will be 100 knots until we get to the end of the runway and then we want to land about 80 or 90 knots. I actually looked all that up. Um, final approach is 100 knots on this plane even though the white arc goes down to like 80. So I will try to do that. I'll try to stick to that. Let's try to stick to the actual speeds we're supposed to. And then the airport is modeled. It's my baby. It's the very first airport I modeled for the Scenery Gateway, Warroad, Minnesota. And um, I had to go back and make some changes, though, because tree lines and farms add on, and then the new roads and things kind of were going over the airport. So I had barns on my airport and stuff. So um, I have fixed it and the fixed version is in the sim and the fixed version has been uploaded to the gateway so the next release of X-Plane will have the corrected um, War Road Airport with better exclusion zones that's pretty much all it was if you know what WED is and how to work with it Just I just had to add some exclusion zones and check a few more categories but I'm happy about that so um, it's going to be hard not to sightsee. I'm going to want to look at Lake of the Woods. I'm going to want to look at the airport and all this stuff, but I can't. i got to focus on flying. You all know I'm kind of bad about that. I'm trying to sightsee when I land, and it doesn't work. So I need to land with focus and then go back and use the amazing replay mode to sightsee upon landing. And yes, I'm kind of stalling here. I want us to pop out of the clouds. There we go. So I'm just kind of blabbing away, but that's stuff I want to share with you. Ooh, there we go. There's a nice sunset under the clouds. All right, we got to get back up front, as pretty as this is, because we are five minutes away, and we need to figure out how we're going to do this here because it's going to be getting dark. We should be able to see everything lit up, though. There's bot dead in front of us. Although the sun makes it kind of hard to see the sunset. What do we have here? We should have some freeways down there. Looks like we do. There's some water on the horizon. Looking good. There's Lake of the Woods. So if you look on the horizon in front of us, that's Lake of the Woods. There's a little bit of Minnesota that you have to go through Canada to get to. On Northwest Angle. But, um, so far, so good. We're at 7,800. I'm going to reduce our speed a little bit. We're getting close to overspeed. Although, like I said, in real life, they do this flight at 257 knots, and our overspeed is about 246. So um, it's a little different than real life, but we're coming up fast. If you see the beacon for the airport in front of us, that's going to be Baudet. We will be passing over Ericsson. It's a private airstrip just outside of Baudet. I modeled that one. I think I, mo I modeled Baudet too. I um, modeled all the northern Minnesota airports except for Duluth, Sky Harbor, and Two Harbors. The rest of them I just went across the northern border of Canada, modeled those, went down a little bit to Orr, Ely, and stuff, did those. And then I needed a break. Alright, All right, so 6,500, let's see, we don't need to descend quite that much, so let's um, go, let's see, 1,000 to 4 minutes, we only need to go 3,000 feet, so let's do 1,000 feet per minute. So like I said, 3,000 feet is a little too high when you first see the runway, but that's what the approach plate says, and I'm thinking it's because they don't want you flying too low over the city of War Road. Also, too, um, I guess the more appropriate approach is to actually catch over here and turn left and come to the airport. We're actually going to be scooting in a little bit towards War Road just because I want to see the city as we fly by. And then we'll turn. There's an airport right there, actually. That little beacon. 
So instead of coming way over here and turning left, I wanted to come here so we can see by that, see War Road. So, um, we may be upsetting the locals a little bit with this, but I don't see a huge problem. And let's finish up our wing views here before we have to pack it up and pay attention to what we're doing. We are looking to the east. And then looking to the west. Oh, the sun set went away. Okay, that's fine. It'll be easier to land, I guess. I guess it went away quite a while ago. Maybe because we're getting lower to the ground. I'm not sure how that gets interpreted. This is HD Mesh version 3, by the way. As I always fly with whatever possible. All right, so the plan then, as soon as we get to Dolpe here, we'll turn towards your heading bug here, and that'll line us up directly with the runway. In fact, we could let autopilot turn us, and this actually lines up with the runway perfectly, but we're gonna be way too high, and I could lower this, I guess, but we need to take over anyway. If we had ILS, I would do an approach until we got right to the minimums, and then I'd take over, but we don't have ILS in the sim, so I'm just gonna take over here, turn towards your heading here, descent quickly and bleed off speed quickly which isn't hard to do in this plane I'll just kill the throttle while we're going down and we'll bleed off speed let down gear let down some flaps let's see we got everything set yep just hope my reverser button didn't remap itself I think we'll be okay We got a minute and a half. Let's have our last look outside until we approach. If you look below the airplane, that's Ericsson. I modeled this one, a couple houses and a grass strip there. Otherwise, there's an airport under the belly of the plane, and there's Lake of the Woods in front of us, and we are ready to land this thing. And look at that crosswind. Oh my. That's fascinating. All right, let's land this thing. As pretty as it is to look at. All right, let's start bleeding off some speed now, I think. And we're at 3,000 feet, as expected. About 40 seconds ahead of schedule, but that's okay. I don't do this for a living, so I'm not going to be totally precise. That's pretty much what northern Minnesota looks like here. Lots of trees. It's not all farmland. This is the upper Midwest. It's not farmland country, although there are a lot of soybean farms here. All right, we'll let the autopilot churn us, and then we'll lose some speeds are coming down. There's a main freeway right below us. We can take that to the west to Roseau. And then you can get to Roseau, turn right, and head to Canadian border, 10 miles away. All right, let's kill autopilot in the middle of a turn, whatever. See how high we were too high? You see the pappy? And then Roseau, I mean Roseau, War Road, the city is right here. That's where Marvin Windows headquarters resides. It's modeled pretty well, too. That's just autogen, but um, it's very convincing. One of my very first flights, if not my first flight in my, on this channel, I go to War Road and um, have a close look at downtown and stuff. All right, let's get gear down. First set of flaps. And we need to descend still, so we are going to trim like crazy here. let out some more throttle or bring back the throttles and get down. Now we're getting better with the, with the um, pappies there. So there's War Road. Didn't I tell myself I wasn't going to sightsee? This is for Auto Feather. Alright, we're lined up with the pappies, so let's do 500 feet per minute. 
or so, a little bit more throttle because we don't want to get to 100 knots yet. There's downtown looking good. Okay, we got to lose speed again. See, I sight scene for three seconds and we're all screwed up. But we have plenty of time to get back on track. I'm going to slow down so I can let out more flaps here. Because we're going to float. Second set of flaps out. We're going to float, throttle so we don't go below 100. There we go. We're getting blown off course a little bit. Alright, we got to come down faster. We're going to overshoot the pappies. Obviously, the runway's long enough, but. All right, there's 100 knots, about 110. Down to 100, we want to stay at 100. All right, one hand on the yoke, one hand on the throttle. It's kind of difficult. We're just gonna flow a little bit. We're a little slower than I want to be. Level off a little bit, and then lower the throttle, and let's float over the runway very nicely. There we go. Reversers. Put the nose down kind of hard, but we were landing kind of fast. And we'll go to 40 and we'll vacate here if it'll let me. Nope. A little too fast to vacate. So we'll let the flaps in here and we'll look for the next turn off. There's the other run with the grass runway. Actually, I think we have to go way down to the end now, so we'll just cruise along here. Had I landed at the end of the runway like we should have, we would have made that taxi would have vacate, but that's okay. I'm excited to look at that replay of that landing. The nose came down kind of hard, but we were kind of popping a wheelie all the way down the runway. Alright, start slowing down now. There we go. I've mentioned this in other videos that my rudder control is, I have to recalibrate it or something because, I don't know. Of course in real life you would have peripheral vision and you could see the size of your aircraft, but here we don't. So let's just taxi and park and then we'll do a replay of the landings. There is one mistake in this airport, and that's because in order to fix it, I have to undo something pretty major and redo something pretty major, and it's not worth the risk of breaking other parts of it. So I'm not going to tell you what that mistake is, although it's not obscure, it's pretty obvious when you see it, but um, if you ever want to have a look at this airport, Kilo Romeo Romeo Tango, and see if you can find my mistake be my guest. Alright, we're about to park this thing. We'll park in the commercial area where they park in real life for this jet. And then we'll look at the runways. I mean the replays and um, we'll be done just in time for my evening to be interrupted here in a good way. My wife will be home from watching a movie but, um, all right, well, they park over here. So we will park right next to this guy. Stop, set the parking brake, turn the taxi lights off so we don't bother everybody. We'll take care of the rest of this after we do the replays. Let's have a look. All right, we're coming in for our landing. There's a runway. And, um... It felt pretty smooth. It almost felt too smooth because that nose wheel did not want to come down. 
Let me float it a little bit. On purpose to smooth it out. And there we go. And I used the reversers because I didn't want to go too far, but that made the nose wheel pop down. I could have probably pushed forward on the yoke a little bit and then hit my reversers, but I don't fly aircraft with reversers that often. Let's have a look at a runway view. There we're coming in. Pretty close to center. We were getting blown around a little bit though. And there we go, and we land. And we pop a wheelie. I also turned on runways follow terrain. If you notice that little dip. I normally have that off. But I have it on because um, I'm going to be doing a special flight pretty soon and it's required and I didn't want to forget. So look for that video to be the next video actually. Alright, we'll do a um, passenger seat view and then we'll be done. There's a nice airport. Looks just like that too. I'm happy with WED. Even though you're very restricted to what objects you can use, um, you, if you put the time into it you can really make it look custom. And slam the nose wheel. Alright, let's head back to real time. Alright, we gotta turn some things off here. We are going to dial back the props. Listen, listen. That right there is awesome. We'll kill the... Kill the throttle. Turn the seatbelt sign off. Um, turn on all of the cabin lights. And we can keep that on. We'll turn that. I gotta look that up. We'll turn that off. We'll keep the strobes on because we're existing. And um, let's see. Is this kind of reverse order of how we started up? I don't know. And I never really do proper shutdowns. It's not that big of a deal to me. Um, probably do stuff with that. Probably do that. Turn these off. Turn off avionics. I think we can have the battery off and still have lights. Yes, we can. And 15 frames per second or some crap. Anyway, alright. Um, let's see here. I think we're actually going to take a moment to walk through and open up the door. Everything's on. And um, I think you push here. There it is. You can walk on out here, watch the props. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. This is my first real life flight um, simulation, I guess, where we copy real life flight plan as best as we can, fly a real life aircraft on a real life route to real life airplanes with a real life company. Um, hope to do more of these, actually, if I time permits. But hope you enjoyed it, and if there are any real life flights you would like me to try in the near home area, as long as they're short enough, so we're talking under 90 minute flight time, I'd be very willing to do that. And please subscribe if you ran into me by chance. If you're a regular subscriber, thank you for watching. Um, we do have a special flight coming next. Share this with your friends. Let them know about my channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.